Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you my process when it comes to editing concert photos. Uh, with concerts, it's a lot of unexpected things happen like the lighting situation it may not be how you want it to be, all these random factors. So when it comes to concert photos, editing is actually very important as opposed to like a portrait shoot that you may have where everything is already set up how you want it. In this video, I'm going to edit a photo from the Snow Allegra show in 2019, which was actually my first record label gig. So I'm going to show you how I took a photo that didn't look so good into a much better photo. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. So right here, this is the photo we're working with. This is a photo of Snow Allegra. Obviously, the skin tones are really off and the photo looks very flat. A lot of times concerts are unpredictable, like I mentioned before. Uh, a lot of times there's fog. So the subject a lot of times falls into the background. So I want to show you what I do specifically for like what I consider like a bad photo like this, even though like composition and everything's fine, uh, just the lighting and everything's off. But before I get into it, if you want to get Lightroom and you don't have it yet, Adobe has two promotions going on. One is you can get Photoshop and Lightroom together in a bundle, which is actually cheaper than buying them individually. You can get over 60% off the entire Adobe Creative Cloud suite if you're a student or teacher. So make sure to check the pinned comment as well as description below for that. But yeah, let's just get into it. So the first thing I'll do usually is adjust the temperature. When it comes to concerts, skin tones always messed up. Uh, there's a her concert that I went to and her face was just blue. So sometimes I actually have to make the photo black and white or else the photo just looks bad. This is an example of a photo that is retrievable because I have edited this photo in the past and it looks really good once I actually adjust the temperature. So I always adjust the temperature because uh, concerts are always sort of unpredictable. So in this case, I'll just move it left. And you can see as I move it left, her skin tone actually becomes a little bit more realistic. So we get more of like a purple look, which I actually like a lot here. So right there, we actually brought the photo back to life by just adjusting temperature. If you didn't do that, you might as well just throw the photo away. But in this case, we were able to sort of make it a little bit more realistic. You can see her hands. I'm sure this is closer to her hand color than oranges. Um, so yeah, the next thing I always do is I always add contrast. And usually because there is fog in like 99% of concerts, the photo ends up very flat. So I'll boost up contrast here. Her face is a little bit underexposed, so I'll uh, up the exposure increase highlights, decrease shadows, increase whites, decrease blacks. So this is like an additional amount of contrast. You don't have to do this. Uh, some people like a flatter look, a more like film look, but I, I like bright colors, very strong blacks. Um, as for clarity and dehaze, I'll increase clarity a little bit just so that we can see the subject. It's a little bit more defined, especially if there's no like backdrop, like no visual background. At the concert, usually like there's a screen where like there's visuals, but some people don't have tour visuals. In this case, uh, there's just like a light in the background. You might want to add some sort of like texture. Um, and when there's fog, you do want to add dehaze. This is sort of like the purpose of dehaze. For curves, it really depends what I'm looking for. If I want a flat, like more subtle look, what I'll do is I'll move down the highlights. So the white's sort of like less visible, like you can see it dulls out the whites and you can do the same thing to the shadows and it'll create like this film look. It'll fade out the blacks. Uh, some people like this very like flat look. I personally don't like it. What I'll do first, I usually is just make a point in the middle and I'll just move it up and down to see if like it looks better when it's brighter or darker. In this case, I don't really have to do much. I do want to make it a little bit darker uh, in like the shadows. So here I'll just move this down a little bit. And then I'll just play around. Like I'll either just go up and down. Usually I don't make more than like five points. Usually I make a point like here, here, and here, and just move it up and down. Nothing super special. And here's sort of like the last place I'll go. I don't really uh, adjust like uh, split toning or detail or anything like that. Last thing I'll do is go to HSL. And this is actually where it fixes everything, especially skin tones. So in this case, her skin is like reddish pinkish. So if we wanted to make it brighter or change the color of her skin, we can easily do that. So in this case, I think her skin would correspond to red. So if I just increase luminance, which is basically brightness, you can see what happens, right? Uh, we can also go to saturation. And if her face is a little bit too saturated, a little bit too red, we could decrease the saturation. In this case, I would increase it. I mean, I would change the hue so that there's a slightly different red, which uh, maybe corresponds a little bit closer to her skin tone. With a uh, hue, I also adjust certain colors, right? That's the point of hue. So in this case, maybe I don't like this like pinkish color. Maybe I want more of a purple color. I'll find what color corresponds with the background here 
it's probably purple or magenta. Okay, it's not purple, so it'll have to be magenta, right? So you can see here, uh, magenta changes the background. And I really like how it looks like right here. It's more purple than pink. So that's what I'll go with. So if we just go before and after, you can see right there, I already retrieved sort of the photo and I made it look a lot better in my opinion. Uh, some people might disagree, but that's basically what I do when it comes to concert photos. And I'll basically just select all the photos that are in similar lighting and I will press sync. And then here you can sync all the different settings. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to copy the settings and paste it on something that has different lighting. So this is an obvious example, right? The lighting is different. The colors are different. So if we pasted our preset, it wouldn't look that good, right? So what you want to do is you want to make certain edits to different lighting situations and then sort of like copy and paste them to the ones that correspond to that like photo set. So even this photo is a little bit different to the first one, but it has similar characteristics. It's very orange. So what we could do is probably paste it on here and make a little bit of adjustment. So here you can see your skin tones look a lot better, but I don't like how it's so dark. So we could maybe like increase the vibrance and saturation, maybe not make it so contrasty. You can see the whites fit really pop out. Maybe use less clarity as well. It looks a little bit too harsh. So that's basically what I would do for like a new lighting situation that's very similar. And here you can see the before and after. But yeah, that's basically how I go about editing my photos. Uh, this is just one set of photos. Every single concert is going to be different with different lighting situations. All concerts are different. So I'm just basically showing you sort of like what I look at first. First is always temperature. Second is always contrast. And third is always HSL. Everything else is optional in my opinion. And yeah, that's about it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. You guys can also check out my Discord channel in the description as well as pin comment. We're almost at 1000 members. So make sure to check that out if you want to network with other creators and maybe share your work as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.